Hello everyone and welcome here. Today we are making little flower pouches, little bags, whatever you want to call them, that look like this. So you can fit surprisingly a lot in this. You could fit a charger, you can fit lip balms, maybe some change, money, really anything fairly small. So the yarn I will be using is a weight for cotton yarn and it's from Hobby Lobby and it's the I Love This Cotton. I'm using these two colors today, but you can use whatever colors you want. You can use a different type, like an acrylic. I just like using this cotton because I feel like it gives it a little bit more structure. And then I am using a four millimeter crochet hook, a stitch marker, and some scissors. And also a darning needle to weave in my ends. This is adapted from my flower coaster pattern. And it is essentially, if you ever made that pattern before, two of the coasters sewn together using slip stitch. And then you add this little strap chain closure. So without further ado, let's get started. To get started, we are going to start a magic ring. And for most of the methods I use in this video, I will have an additional tutorial linked down below in the description, and as well as all of the tools I'm using today. So start off a magic ring. And then I'm going to crochet six single crochet into the magic ring. So we have our six single crochet, and so you're just gonna close that ring. And that is it for round one. For round two, we are going to work two single crochets into each stitch. So the first single crochet might be a little tough to work into. And then you're going to place your stitch marker and that's our first stitch. And in that same stitch, we're gonna work one more single crochet. And then we're gonna continue working two single crochets into each stitch until the end of the round. That is it for round two. And for round three, we're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch. Replace your marker. And in the next stitch, we're going to work an increase. So an increase is two single crochet into the same stitch. And then we will just repeat that sequence by working one single crochet into the next, and then an increase into the next, one single crochet into the next, and increase in the next. So by the end of the round, you should be ending on an increase. That's it for round three. For round four, we're going to work an increase into the first stitch. And then we're going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that sequence by working an increase into the next and then one single crochet into the next two stitches, an increase into the next, and then one single crochet into the next two stitches, and repeat from there. Your last stitch should be just a single crochet. And that's it for round four. For round five, we are going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we're going to work an increase into the next. 
and then we will repeat that sequence by working one single crochet into the next three stitches and then an increase into the next and then one single crochet into the next three stitches and then an increase into the next. You should be ending on an increase at the end of the round. Okay, I am working my last stitch into the increase. So before I finish that stitch, okay, I'll show you here. I already worked one single crochet into that increase and then to work one more. And before I finish, I'm going to pick up my other color. If you're not doing a color change, that is fine, but I will be. So I have my other color and I'm going to finish off that single crochet right now. For round six, I personally don't need my stitch marker anymore, but if you need it to keep track of where you are, you can continue to use that. So for round six, we are going to work one half double crochet into each stitch until the end of the round. So you just work half double crochets, and I'm going to crochet over these two yarn ends, so I won't have to weave them in later, but you don't have to do that. Finished my half double crochet round, which is round six. And for round seven, we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch of that round. So the first half double crochet of that round. And then we are going to chain one and slip stitch into that same stitch. And then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and then we are going to work five double crochets into the next stitch. And then you're going to half double crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next. And then from here, you will repeat that sequence. So like you started with, the slip stitch and the chain one don't count at the beginning of this round, just the second slip stitch you did. So you slip stitch, chain, and then slip stitched again. So that's where the sequence starts. So you're going to slip stitch, single crochet into the next, half double crochet into the next, and then work five double crochets into the next, then half double crochet into the next, single crochet into the next, and repeat the sequence starting with the slip stitch again. So repeat that until you have no more stitches left. Okay, I just finished my single crochet. Now I need to work my slip stitch, which you may be thinking that this is the slip stitch you're supposed to work in, but this does not count as a stitch. This is what you slip stitched to connect the round to the first stitch. So you do not work in this slip stitch and you do not work in this chain. You work into the first slip stitch of the round. So I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch. And then you should have five pretty petals forming. So for round eight, we are going to chain one and then slip stitch into that same stitch. And then we are going to work a single crochet into the next stitch. And then we are going to work one half double crochet into the next three stitches. And then work three half double crochets into the next stitch. And then we're going to work one half double crochet into the next three stitches. And then work one single crochet into the next stitch. 
and then we will repeat that sequence starting with the slip stitch we made at the beginning of the round. So we're going to work a slip stitch into the next, a single crochet into the next, one half double crochet into the next three, three half double crochets into the next, one half double crochet into the next three, one single crochet into the next, and then you repeat the sequence. Here's a little something I like to do. Instead of putting the slip stitch into the next stitch, I like to go directly under it. So instead of the stitch, I like to go under it right here in slip stitch because I think it makes the petals a little more, just look more petally, I guess. But you do not have to do this at all. I just like to do it. I think it gives it a slightly better look, but to most people, it won't even be noticeable. So yes, you just repeat that sequence. Again, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. So not this slip stitch, not this chain, but this slip stitch. Okay, and you can stop here because one of the pouches I did stop here at round eight, but you can continue to round nine, which will look more like this. They only have about a half inch difference in size, so it's not a lot. But if you do want a slightly smaller pouch, you can stop here. Or if you want it to look more like this one, then you can continue to the ninth and final round. So for round nine, we're going to chain one and slip stitch into that first stitch. And then we're going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're going to work one half double crochet into the next and then a half double crochet increase into the next. Then a half double crochet into the next. A half double crochet increase into the next. A half double crochet into the next. A half double crochet increase into the next. half double crochet into the next and then one single crochet into the next two stitches and then you will repeat that sequence so it's slip stitch I work a normal slip stitch into the slip stitch right here. I don't go under it this time. I only did that for the eighth round. So then you're going to work a slip stitch, one single crochet into the next two stitches, a half double crochet into the next, a half double crochet increase into the next, a normal half double crochet into the next, a half double crochet increase into the next, a half double crochet into the next, a half double crochet increase into the next, a half double crochet into the next and then one single crochet into the next two stitches and you just repeat that until the end of the round okay i just worked my last single crochet slip stitch into the first stitch of the round you're going to fasten off now And that is it for the finished flower. You're just going to repeat this whole process one more time. So you have two flowers to seam together. I'll meet you back here when I have my second flower. Once you have your two flowers done, we're going to seam them together. So how I did it here, I attached the yarn on either side of these two petals. I will show you how I do that. So first I'm gonna start by making a slip knot, 
holding my two flowers together. And you can really put it anywhere on this petal. I'm going to kind of do it in the top middle of the petal. But if you want a wider opening or a smaller opening, you can attach it anywhere along this petal. But like I said, I'm roughly doing it around the middle of it. And make sure you attach it into the, the same stitch on the other flower. Grab your slip knot and then pull through. Now I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into that same stitch. And you just repeat from there. So we're just going to slip stitch on both sides in every stitch until you come to where you roughly started on this side. So I'm going to stop in the middle-ish of this petal. So I'm gonna work my way around and stop about right here. Make sure you don't skip your slip stitches, which may be a little hard to see, but your stitch count could be off and the flowers could be wonky when seen together. So just make sure you don't miss those slip stitches, the tiny slip stitches in between the petals. I seamed all around my flower except for this opening right here. Now we are going to slip stitch in just one side of the flower around and just the other side of the flower so we're no longer seaming them together. So you're just gonna slip stitch into only one flower. Until you come to the middle, the in between the petals. Okay, and right here, these two stitches in between the petals, I'm going to slip stitch into it. I'm going to chain eight. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch right next to it. So we have our first little loop. And then I'm going to continue slip stitching along the next petal. And here's my seam from the beginning. I'm just gonna jump over and slip stitch into the other flower and continue slip stitching. And I'm going to continue to slip stitch in this flower until I come to the middle part again. Okay, when I come to the middle, I'm going to slip stitch. And I'm going to chain 40, but if you want more or less, you can chain more or less. But for me, a good length is 40. After you have your 40 chains, or however many you chained for your strap personally, we're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And then we're just going to finish slip stitching into this petal before slip stitching into the beginning. All right, now this is my first slip stitch. So I'm just going to slip into that slip stitch. And then fasten off. And 
And that's it for your little flower pouch.